YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back. And yes, I got another updated NFL mock draft. This one's going to be three rounds. But I did just, it feels like I just did a two-round mock draft. But now that we're at the Combine here, now that a lot of teams are there, um, you know, all the players are there, obviously, you're hearing a lot of news and rumors. Now, some of it's just smoke. Some of it's, you know, realistic. Uh, you know, last year, all this stuff kind of ended up being true for the most part. It was kind of surprising. So, um, you know, there's a little bit of changes in my mock draft already because of what you hear, um, what there is to believe, and that kind of changes the entire mock. One pick, really, and there's multiple changes, but, you know, one pick can change an entire mock draft. So I thought, why not? Let's get a three-round mock draft in here right before the combine starts. I'm really excited about the combine, you know, this year, real pumped. Uh, and you're going to want to follow our Twitter and uh, keep track with us with this combine here. So go ahead and follow it there. I'm going to be posting a lot of stuff about the combine and more than that too. NFL rumors, all kinds, always talking on the Twitter. And we have a new Instagram as well. Link in the description. Please give us a follow on both of those. It would be much appreciated. But like I said, yeah, this was kind of a last minute thing. Um, so I'm using this great new website. The Draft Network actually was uh, not really a new site, but they have a new mock draft machine. So, uh, you know, Shout out to these guys over there. This is a this is a great and useful tool here for all of us that love the draft and want to cover the draft. So, um, you know, didn't have the time to put the graphics together, but it's okay because we got this. It's good to run through uh, using this if you want to do a three round mock draft real quick. So, um, we're gonna take a look here right off the bats, and I'm actually gonna use. I started to whip up a big board just for this. You know, not 100% accurate. For in my rankings right now, but I just, I knew I was doing a three round mock. So threw a bunch of guys in here. Um, if you want to see my position rankings constantly being updated, uh, there's a link in the description, a little info in the description for how you can see that. Usually don't release that till closer to the draft because it's constantly being updated. But if you want to be a part of that, uh, go check it out in the description. But starting with the Cardinals, you know, from what. We're hearing, it, we're kind of back to the Kyler Murray thing. Now, is it true? I haven't done, I've done a bunch of mock drafts already, and I haven't really bought into the whole Kyler Murray to the Cardinals thing, but there's a lot of, you know, a lot of sources that you can trust that really believe it. You know, same sources that thought Mayfield was going one last year. Um, you hear Adam Schefter talk about it too. He's the same guys that told him about Baker Mayfield. Uh, you know, they're the ones saying Kyler Murray. He didn't really believe the Mayfield thing, even though he was reporting it. He didn't really believe it. He was all in for Darnold. So uh, it's very interesting. And the one thing that I keep thinking of and I see other people talking about is this is Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury, really his one and only shot. I mean, he's going to have a couple of years to, ch to try for the car. Well, they just fired Wilkes after one year, so you never really know. But, you know, if he doesn't, if it doesn't work out with the Cardinals, he's not getting another NFL job. So he's going to have his one shot. He's got his new style offense, um, you know, and in his one and only shot, you want to make sure he wants to make sure that he's got it right. And I'm starting to buy it a little bit. Maybe I'm crazy. I haven't done one single mock draft with him one, but this is a mock draft kind of based off the news and rumors. I'm not buying every single one of them, but this is kind of based off this in the now. We're in the now right now, pre combine. So let's do it. You know, I haven't done one of these. I'm starting to buy into it a little bit. I want to see the scenarios. You know, the whole draft changes if they make that pick. And him coming in 5'10 does really help because it was I was starting to buy into that, honestly, that, you know, there was people, um, you know, saying that they've stood next to him. He's 5'8 at best, which is, ends up being ridiculous. He's 5'10, uh, so that helps a lot. You know, other guys that have success in the NFL have been 5'10", you know, it, it's not really a problem. It's not a problem for me. You know, if he was 5'8", it would have been a little bit of a problem. But, um, you know, would I take him one? You know, probably not. But, you know, you think about Kingsbury's offense and this Cardinals offense and what defenses don't, what the, the defenses struggle against in today's NFL, yeah, then maybe I'd think about it, you know, because it's – I don't really want to play against Kyler Murray in that offense, honestly, in the NFL. You know, these the, all the defensive coordinators, they're old school guys. They've been running these defenses for so long. A lot of them work. We saw the defense start to go away a little bit last year. Um, and that's why they struggle on these offenses because they're not used to it. You know, we almost need new defense coordinators to stop the – the new offense coordinators really is what it is. Uh, but on the Niners. The Niners, from what I'm hearing, would love to have Nick Bosa, edge rusher from Ohio State. Um, so, But he could still go one. Very possible he can go one still. Uh, but 
if Kyler Murray goes one, then they get Nick. They can get Nick Bosa. You know, there's some rumors they could actually trade up to one spot. You know, if the Cardinals don't really have, if maybe they do want Kyler Murray, they don't. They're not really sold. Uh, there's not much of a difference between Nick Bosa, Josh Allen, Quinton Williams. Uh, they can trade back one spot. So we'll see if the Niners can pull that off. Uh, from what I've heard, they really like Nick Bosa. You can't always believe it, but I believe it. I think they really like Nick Bosa. I'm buying that. Uh, on to the Jets. Tough situation here. Um, yeah, see, I made this big board, and it, they already jumbled it up here. Uh, you know, I love this website, but the, the, don't pay attention to that because it's already, like, moving my guys into a rank where I – and it's not because guys are off the board. It's it's jumbling guys up here. It's jumbling because I don't have Cleveland Farrell. I had a Quinn Williams on my big board. That's just, So don't really pay attention to that. Um, we'll get to those videos on my rankings and stuff in, in the future. But – the Jets have two options here, Josh Allen and Quinton Williams. Apparently, they're, I've been talking about how the Jets got Greg Williams for their defense corner, and I've been reporting that, are basically saying they should switch to a 4-3 because that's Greg Williams' defense. He's saying he's going to keep it to a 3-4, which I kind of like that because um, you don't want to have to retool this whole thing. Even though they're in somewhat rebuild mode, it would be understandable, but um, they're going to stick to the 3-4. They have players that fit that better. Um, so it's really between Josh Allen, who would play outside linebacker, and Quinton Williams, who would play on the D-line for them. And and it's either one. It's one of those two for sure. Uh, the rumors are that they're they're trying to trade back actually from three and gain those picks they lost last year, which makes sense to me. Who would they move back for? Um, depends on how far back, but maybe they would move back for an offensive lineman like Jonah Williams, like Juwan Taylor. Maybe they would move back for a pass rusher that they think they, they can get – uh, a little further back that's not too far off from Josh Allen, like his style, like a Ja'Kai Polite, Brian Burns, uh, Montez Sweat. So I'm not doing any trades in these mocks. I will do that closer to the draft, a little closer. We're not too far out here from those. Uh, but for now, between Josh Allen and Quinn Williams at pick three, I'm going to put Josh Allen in there because they need pass rush from that outside linebacker position, and Josh Allen makes sense to me. Now we're on to the Raiders, and the Raiders get a no-brainer here. Quinn Williams sitting there. Uh, they're going to go ahead and take him. Best player available, no doubt, and a need. Pretty easy there. Uh, the Bucks. now this is tough. Bucks tough situation. Uh, they could go a number of things. They can go offensive line. They could go uh, pass rush. They can go safety. But, or they need a safety. They're not going to go safety at five, so i got to correct myself there. Um, you know, I wouldn't rule them out in the Kyler Murray sweepstakes, but obviously he's off the board, board in this situation. They can go Cleveland Farrell. I think he can play the end spot. Perhaps for them, even in a 3-4, Ed Oliver's sitting there. They're supposed to keep Gerald McCoy, uh, so he's going to play the end spot in a 3-4. Vita Vea's going to play the nose, so they could use another end. I'm kind of wondering what Jason Pierre-Paul is going to do. And this defense, obviously, a very talented guy. So they can go in a number of, thing, of things here. Um, very appealing with Ed Oliver. Ed Oliver is really my best player available at this point. So again, the site, you know, great site. They kind of messed up my... They jumbled up my rankings somehow. I think, I think glitch probably happened based off what I'm drafting here. Um, so don't really pay attention to too much. They're in the ballpark. These guys are in the ballpark. I'll give you that. Uh, but they can go in a number of these things here. Um, Ed Oliver would be very, very appealing. You know, I would strongly consider it. I think, you know, offense line was a problem last year. In the right side, you got a couple free agents. Um or the left side, actually, I should say, with Donovan Smith. But uh, and Juwan Taylor is my best offensive lineman, but I think he's going to play on the right side. Uh, so I'm going down looking at a guy like Jonah Williams. I think in this situation, I'm going to go ahead and say they would take him. You know, maybe a little bit of a reach. Some people are higher on him. Some people are a little lower. Uh, the league is too. You know, there's people in the league that think he's a top pick. He could go to the Jets at three. He can go to the Bucks at five. Uh, he can come in and play tackle right away. He played left tackle for Alabama. There's some people who are like. Well, we want to move him to guard. You know, let's move. I think he'll be better at guard. And there's actually some people that say he can play center, uh, in at the next level. Uh, the Bucks could use a left tackle. Really, I, I say Juwan Taylor is the best offensive lineman at this point, but he's more of a fit at right tackle. Joan Williams has the potential to play left tackle right away. My gut feeling, even though Ed Oliver is my best player available, and Cleveland Farrell would, would be next for me. Gut feeling was in this situation. From what we're hearing here, I, I think Jonah Williams would be the pick. We got the Giants next. Giants, I got the feel, um, you know, from what we're hearing, I got the feel they like Dwayne Haskins. They're going to go Dwayne Haskins if he's there. I think he's going to be the number one quarterback on the, on their board, even if Kyler Murray's there. So 
I, I just don't think Kyler Murray fits Shermer's offense. I just, I, I just don't. You know, uh, so I think I really think they go Dwayne Haskins. You know, they let Eli teach him some things too. So uh, I think they're in the running for Nick Foles still. Uh, it's definitely a possibility. I just think this team that's on the clock now, the Jags. I think they're more in the running for a guy like Nick Foles. Um, so they don't go quarterback here. I think we have another offensive lineman off the board. Now we're going back to Juwan Taylor. You know, they got to make sure this offensive line is good for Nick Foles, you know, like, kind of like how the Eagles did it. Uh, they don't really have too many other huge needs. They could use a receiver as well, but I don't think they take a receiver at seven. Um, so I got them going Juwan Taylor. And then we got the Lions picking at eight. A number of things here, too. Uh, I think they'll like TJ Hawkinson, safe tight end, can do it all. Uh, it would be a great pick. Uh, Cleveland Farrell, I think he'll fit. It really it come in an Ed Oliver. You know they'll like Ed Oliver. You know he's the best player available at this point. Um, they're pretty set, I think, on interior D line. They could use another one, but I think they're more looking at edge rushers. They need one as if they even get Ziggy Ansah back. I don't know if they get Ziggy Ansah back. So they're going to be looking at in this situation Cleveland Farrell, uh, Rashawn Gary, Kai Polite, Brian Burns. Just something tells me uh, is that Patricia would love to work with a guy like Rashawn Gary, and. People bash him because it's production. They go look up. They go type in Rashawn Gary, and, and, and they see how many how many sacks he has. And that's just not the way to go, you know. Um, hasn't had the most production. There's a couple. He has a legitimate excuses. You know, he did have an injury this year. Um, nobody's really too worried about the injury going forward. But if you literally go watch him, like if you go watch like tape, not highlights, not, you know, you go watch play after play after play. He will actually be double, and I've seen triple teams a lot. You know, even go watch the Michigan Ohio State game um, when he was able to play, and, and you see you see double and triple teams. It's unreal. You know, he's an athletic guy. You know, I think worst case scenario here. I think Patricia develops him into a defensive end for the Lions, but worst case scenario, they kick him in inside, and he can play start at the, at the inside position. So uh, he can do multiple things. That's what pl- some teams are looking for, and a lot of teams are looking for. Um, you know, we heard an interview with Gruden. You know, he says he looks for production from that spot. But then right after he said that, he said off of if they're single team. Like, what happens if they're double team? He said that right away. So who did I picture right when he said that? It was Rashawn Gary. He doesn't have the production, but then he's also double and triple team. You know, everybody's different. I think Patricia would like to work with him. It's just a gut feeling at this point. Uh, the Bills at nine. Very tough. Two guys here that come in mind. Uh, three guys actually, because Ed Oliver's still on the board. They could use him in the interior D line. You know, they may have missed on Latule. They paid him a lot of money, but they 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 paid him that money because they have belief in him. I have belief in him too. I think he's going to be pretty good. Uh, they drafted Harrison Phillips last year. He has a chance to be good, but you could definitely get better with Ed Oliver. He'd be your best interior D line. He's the best player available. I'm usually on board with going with the best guy on my board. So is he the best guy on the board? Uh, DK Metcalf's a fit with the Bills. He's a Josh Allen type of guy. It would work out. They need a receiver pretty bad. From what I'm hearing, the receivers aren't supposed to go as high as we think, really. So nine's pretty high. Um, I think after these guys see them run and see them work out, they're going to see how good they are, though. Uh, I think TJ Hawkinson is a legitimate uh, prospect for them here. Because, you know, they got rid of Clay. It's a do-it-all tight end. He's definitely worthy of the ninth pick. And then somebody that I'm kind of sticking with is, is Cody Ford. Because they need help on the right side of the line. They need help. They need that help right now. Um, it's, it's it's tough. You know, I'm, I'm doing this. Usually I have this done um, when I do these videos. I'm kind of doing this live with you guys. So it's, uh, I'm kind of narrowed down to DK Metcalf and Cody Ford. Something tells me they want to make sure that right side of the line is set. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go Cody Ford. I think they're gonna. You know, they got Josh Allen. He's their guy. They traded up for him. He got hurt a couple times last year. They want to make sure that the whole line is set for him for them to grow through the free, through the future. And that would apply to a receiver like DK Metcalf, and that would be great. Metcalf there, Hawkinson too. All would be great. Um, just something tells me is they would just really make sure that that line is good for Josh Allen. It's a safer choice, really. And from what we're hearing, the receivers are could go a little later than what we think. I do think that'll turn around, but it's a possibility since we are hearing that. Uh, the Broncos at 10, I think um, pretty much a no-brainer at this point. I think Devin White, um, worthy of the pick. He's a Vic Fangio guy, you know, comparisons to Roquan Smith. You know, I think Devin White has more of an upside than Roquan Smith, but Roquan Smith was much safer, much more pro-ready. Devin White... 
Devin White's a boomer bust guy. You know, if I had to pick one, I'd say Roquan Smith. But Devin White, you know, ha- has those moments. Not that Roquan Smith didn't, but Devin White has those moments where you just jump out of your seat and you, you know, you want to go in the game and, and hit somebody. So um, I think he's a Vic Fangio guy. I think they can use him too. And they're not bringing Brandon Marshall back. So uh, you could use him anyways. So I think that makes sense there. Could still potentially go quarterback. A couple things here. Corner they could go. Bengals are up next. And the Bengals wouldn't hesitate to take the best player available. And Ed Oliver, pair him with Geno Atkins. Uh, makes sense there. You know, they get a steal there at 11. And, but then some people may scratch him off because he's undersized. You know, and people are saying he may have to play linebacker. I'm not buying that. But uh, I don't think the Bengals would pass on him there. Uh, I think they would love to have Devin White too, but he's gone. Uh, the Packers are on the board now. And Hawkinson is very appealing here. But they're going to be desperate for pass rushers. Why? Because they could get some in free agency, but they need multiple of them now, right now. So it's determining which one, you know, Polite, Burns, Sweat. I'm going to say they'll like Polite the best. I think he's the best fit out of the three. That's just my opinion right now. Things can change. But I think they'll be pretty desperate for pass rush. But that doesn't show me that they're desperate. I think Polite is worth the 12th pick. But they're going to make sure they get, you know, they get the right guy. Polite, uh, you know, elite traits as a pass rusher, elite. Uh, does need to work on his run stopping ability a little bit. You know, people I think bash him a little bit too much. I think there's a lot of plays where he makes a good play, and, and he's just a split second too late to stop the run because he didn't read it right right away. I think it's something you can work on, and, and it's milliseconds off, uh, or just change something slightly. And that's what the NFL is for. That's what the coaching's for. So play could be turn out to be maybe, maybe even the best player in his draft in, in the future. And you know that's. That's not even kidding. Dolphins. Now, this is where I think we can um, we can go quarterback here. I think we can go Drew Locke, the last guy that's supposed to go in the first round. Let's see, how do we get back? There we go. Okay. Um, so, Drew Locke there at 13, definitely worthy of the pick in terms of him being quarterback. Right now, he's my number one quarterback. You know, I think he's pro-ready. Uh, there's not too many concerns for me for him. You know, some of the other guys I worry about, um, you know, defense, defensive pressure, you know, the pass rush from the NFL. Drew Locke just seems, you know, more ready. He's smooth. So I think the Dolphins love to have him at 13. 14, Falcons are on the clock. Uh, I see I see them going Christian Wilkins in this scenario. Um, makes sense to me there. I, they, they're going to lose Grady Jarrett. Well, maybe they won't lose Grady Jarrett. Either way. They can use a guy like Christian Wilkins, so that's either way. Now we're on to the 15th pick, the Washington Redskins. Uh, DK Metcalf, guys like him, Nikhil Harry would be uh, very appealing for the spot. But and, and this is again, this is not what I would do. But um, Daniel Jones, I think, is actually what they would do in this situation. You know, there's rumors that some teams have him as their number one quarterback. I don't know if I'm buying that, but it sounds like he will go in the top 15 picks. I don't know if I would agree with the pick, but I'm predicting them to do that in this situation. Uh, and then the Panthers get a steal with Cleveland Farrell there. He drops a little bit. Um, I'm going to go back to my board here, which they didn't update completely. I ranked more guys in or I put more guys in this in in there than that, but it's okay. 17. The Browns, yeah, I think they would go DK Metcalf. He drops a little bit and, you know, freakish guy. They have a couple good receivers. They don't have a guy like DK Metcalf to take him to the next level. Uh, and then the Vikings are up. You know, I was kind of praying the Vikings to move around their current offense alignment a little bit and then sign a couple in free agency. So I think they'll do that. I don't know if they go offense alignment in, in the first round. It's still a possibility. But in this situation, I really think they would take – TJ Hawkinson I'm surprised I still had him on the board um, you know very safe play prospect very good tight end can play every down uh, you know he can block the Vikings have kind of been looking for that guy for a while Rudolph's been good but they haven't they've been trying to look for another guy that can be used more as a weapon and I think with it, sitting at 18 if he's still there I think they would take him you know and he helps in the blocking department too um, but it could be an offensive lineman could be a linebacker replace Anthony Barr if he goes could be a number of things really uh, but in that situation, I think too good to pass. Uh, the Titans up next. You know, I, I, I would take Nikhil Harry here, but I just don't think they do it. And then they'll go like a guy like Brian Burns, which would also be a good pick. Uh, and then the Steelers would be up next. Ooh, Steelers. Devin Bush, 
or Greedy Williams is what I'm thinking here. Um, I think they would go greedy. I'm kind of back and forth on that. Every time I do a mock draft, I think they would go greedy here. Uh, and the Seahawks are up next. Who would we give to the Seahawks here? I I think they would like Montez Sweat. They need another edge rusher. I don't think they're going to lose Frank Clark, but they need one anyways. Um, Green could be stepping up. They could go corner. I like a couple of other corners. Byron Murphy, you know, I, you know, scouts like Byron Murphy. I don't know if he goes as high though. Pretty close. Um, Taylor Rapp, I think they would like. For, I'm I'm feeling Montez Sweat for the Seahawks. You know, another guy they can work with. Uh, opposite of Frank Clark there, I think makes a lot of sense. The Ravens are up next. Nikhil Harry makes too much sense for the Ravens. They need a guy like that badly, and he's the best player available at that point, in my opinion. Uh, the Texans go next. Um, they could go offensive line. There's too many good defensive players available here. Uh, and, you know, yeah, one that I said the scouts really like is Byron Murphy. I think they would go up Byron Murphy here. They need a corner, I think, more than people realize. Uh, so I think that's what they would go with. Uh, now we're on to the Raiders. Raiders need a pass rusher. A lot of them are pr- pretty much gone here. You know, we gave them Quinn and Williams, who can help in that uh, category a little bit, but he's more of an interior interior D line, and that's why it's a rough situation. You know, the Raiders have a lot of picks. They may may have to trade back up um, or a little higher, maybe hop the Titans, get a guy like Brian Burns, because there's a big gap between Brian Burns and, and the rest of these guys here. So that's very interesting. Um, so they take the best player available in Quinn Williams, and then they could go multiple. I think they would go Devin Bush here. I think they would go. I, think, I like Devin Bush on the Raiders, one of the best players available at that point. Eagles are up next. Eagles, I think, could use pass rush, but it's too early to take any of the next guys. They could use a running back. They're doing their homework on running backs. Too early to take any of the guys there, I think. I don't really like taking running backs first round either. Uh, I think they would go corner. I like Jawan Williams a lot. S- supposedly DeAndre Baker's supposed to test well than everyone expected. We're going to go with Baker here. And the Colts are up next, a team that could use a receiver. Corner, D lineman, you know, good team, but still some needs here, and they're very good, do a very good job at drafting. So uh, I'm going to give him Jawan Williams. You know, I like Jawan Williams a lot. You know, lengthy, very athletic, I think pro ready. A lot to like about him. I think the Colts would go with him there. And the Raiders are up. A guy that I just, you know, I'm feeling for the Raiders. Both these guys, really, Hakeem Butler and A.J. Brown. Hakeem Butler is a guy that I think Gruden and Mayock will like. You know, I had him as a first-round talent before uh, the measurements today, but I think those measurements kind of make you feel a little better about it. And I think, you know, the teams there will take another look at him. And and the tape, you know, he's good on tape, and he can move. I mean, Really curious to see what he runs, how he does in the drills, but he, he's a very good receiver. You know, uh, wingspan was a record too, but he can play. It's not like he can't play on the field. He can play on the field, and the Raiders will like him. You know, good deep ball guy for Derek Carr. Uh, the Chargers are next. Let's see. I, you know, they need D line and linebackers. You know, out of those two positions, it's not always about need to best available, but you kind of look at the top here and what you need at the same time. Um, I think they would consider. You know, I think they would consider Jeffrey Simmons, who would be, you know, much higher than this if he wasn't hurt. But I think they would pass and go Dexter Lawrence. The Chiefs, I like Taylor Rapp for the Chiefs. Taylor Rapp's, you know, my favorite safety in the draft. Uh, you know, he can do it all, and, and he's got he's very instinctive. He has the play recognition that a lot of guys, you know, don't have at this point of their careers. Uh, so the Chiefs definitely need defensive backs. I think they would go Taylor Rapp there. And the Packers... Packers are up next. To me, uh, you know, the offensive line is still solid, but it could be better. You know, I get veteran guys that get hurt, uh, and they're very good to make sure that offensive line is always good. And, you know, Rodgers got hurt a couple times. So I'm looking for an offensive lineman. And Dalton Reisner is a Packers offensive lineman to me. You know, he's a mean, nasty blocker. Uh, I think that's a good fit. And the Rams, you know, they could be looking for a guy, an offensive lineman too, because, you know, they're – they're a little, you know, some of those guys are aging. Roger Saffold's a free agent, and they got to make sure there's no gap. You know, you don't want to all, all of a sudden halfway through the season, uh, Goff's getting sacked every two seconds. So they could be looking for an offensive lineman. Um, they could be looking at, you know, a guy like Mac Wilson at linebacker. You know, I think if Reisner was there, I think they would give him a good look. Um, Jeffrey Simmons, they may go, they could go. I don't know if anybody takes him in the first round, though, because you see the impacts that these, these rookies are making, helping their teams, and he can't really make that impact right away. And the Rams are trying to win now, so uh, they definitely could use him once he's healthy, though. They could definitely definitely use a guy like that. 
Uh, they can consider a guy like Andre Diller, Mac Wilson. Um, I think a wild card one that's starting to pop my head a little bit more is uh, is a safety. You know, I think they let Lamarcus Joyner go. I think they I think they get some pass rushers and free agency. I think they take a look at the safeties here. Uh, Abram's more of a box guy. Uh, Deontay Thompson, I think they'll like. You know, I I don't know if I would take him with 31st overall. He needs to think he has to work some things he has to work on, but it's just a feeling I got right now. I think they can pair him there with in the safety duo there. Uh, instead of Joyner, it would be Thompson and Johnson. So uh, that would be interesting. I think that, I think that's a good duo. It makes sense to me. But you know, I'm not super high on Deontay Thompson. And the Patriots are up, and I'm thinking receiver for them. I think they would like Marquise Brown. You know, he's got a, he's not able to participate in the combine because injury. You know, his measurements were all there, but the Patriots will make it work. He's a great player. Uh, makes sense to me. Uh, we're on to the second round, and guy I had in mind for a while for the Cardinals is where is he? There, there he is, Andre Dillard. I think he makes sense in that offense. They need offensive line, especially if they get you know Kyler Murray. They got to make sure he's protected. You know. Uh, Dillard, you know, could, he's getting some talk in the first round too, so I think it's definitely a possibility they take him there. I think the Colts, uh, pretty, I think pretty simple pick for them here. I think AJ Brown. I think he's not a receiver like that. I think it's a fit. He can possibly go first round. He's a very good, very good receiver. Uh, the Raiders, we had them taking a defensive lineman, receiver, and linebacker. Where do they go next? They need a pass rusher. Don't think there's one worthy of this spot. That's what's interesting. I think they go Josh Jacobs here. You know, he's sitting there still. Uh, they need a running back of the future. They go Josh Jacobs. No edge rusher worthy of that spot. The Niners are up next. They went Nick Bosa this time around. I think they go receiver. Now, identifying which one. Would they like Debo Samuel, Calvin Harmon? I, I see Calvin Harmon, actually. I'm thinking Calvin Harmon there to the Niners. Seems like a fit. Uh, great route runner, good down the sideline. Uh, the Giants will be up next. They got Dwayne Haskins. They got to make sure he's protected. I think a guy like Kaju sitting there makes sense. The Jags took an offense line in the first round. Now they're looking for a receiver here, uh, and I think Debo Samuel makes a lot of sense there. Uh, they're they're good to go at a receiver here. Uh, too early in the first round to go receiver, uh, so that's a pretty good haul there. They got uh, the Bucks. Took an offensive lineman. Now they could go D line, edge rusher, safety, running back. Could wait a little bit for a running back too. Interesting. Um, I'm thinking the safe. I'm thinking at safety they can go. Jonathan Abram. He could be more. Of, they could like him, even though he's more of a box player. Um, I got to go back to one of these here. Uh, I think they'll like Nasir Adderley. You know, I think his playmaking ability will stand out to him to them. So. Um, Bucks go Adderley there. And the Bills are up next. Bills grabbed an interior offense. Well, I have Cody Ford playing right tackle for them. Um, who do they go with next? Receiver, tight end, possibly. Noah Fant. He's a little bit of both. You know, he lines up in slot. He's almost he's an athletic tight end, almost like receiver. I think that makes sense there. Uh, the Broncos would be up next. They definitely need another corner. Trayvon Mullen, I think, is a fit in Vic Fangio's defense. You know, could be uh, kind of like Kyle Fuller. You know, a little more length on him, I guess, but he could be like that for him. Uh, the Bengals are up next. They took a D lineman, best player available, at Oliver. What could they use next? Um, we talk about linebacker being possibly their biggest need. And Mac Wilson sitting there. Look at that. So you take Mac Wilson. The Lions took an edge rusher. I already know who I'm thinking of next. Uh, could you could use another corner too, um, but it's not showing all my guys on there, and it's driving me nuts. But it's okay. But Irv Smith, Irv Smith makes sense there. They need a tight end. They can go with him. Uh, the Packers would be up next. They got an edge rusher, offensive tackle already. Um, they need a safety pretty desperately here. Uh, Jonathan Abram, yeah, it could be more of a box guy, but they can find ways to use him. Um, and, and definitely worthy of that pick. The Falcons went interior D line first. They can go O line. They can go edge rusher. I'm thinking. I'm thinking O line. You know, make sure it took a little bit of a hit. I think um, this past year. So um, I don't know why it's not showing up my guys. So they could go O line. You know, it didn't play as good as it once maybe was. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give him Greg Little possible first round pick but 
Greg Little there at 45 makes sense. The Redskins took a quarterback. Um, they could use a receiver. They could use a couple things, you know, make sure a receiver for this team, you know. Hmm. Riley Ridley, definitely, definitely an option here. I'm starting to like Riley really a little more, too. I've been watching, like, top defense players, top corners, you know, SEC, and he kind of stands out at the line. You know, he doesn't let anybody press him. You know, we're going to give Riley Ridley to the Redskins. Panthers, game and edge rusher. They could definitely use another one, but somebody I like for them, Ben mocking him, Garrett Bradbury. You know, could be the center of the future, could play, could be a guard, too. Uh, so I like him a lot there. Dolphins definitely need some kind of defense, whether it's defensive line, edge rush. Do they take the chance on Jeff? They do. Let's give him Jeffrey Simmons. I like that a lot. So they take the chance there. Brian Flores just got there. You know, he's willing to work a couple years here. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons is going to be out for a while at the ACL tear, but he's a top 10 player. Uh, makes a lot of sense there. I think that if I don't think he gets by that point now that I'm thinking about it. Browns. Another team that could use an interior D-line. I think they would have taken Jeffrey Simmons if he was just on the board. Um, it's tough. You had him taking a receiver before. Um, we'll go with Charles Amenhu. You know, I like him too. I think, uh, no, we know what? We still got Jerry Tillery on the board. This is not even my board. It's throwing me off. Uh, Jerry Tillery is definitely worthy of that pick. You know, he, I think he's a first-round talent. So, Tillery in there, too good to pass. They could use an interior D-line guy at the same time. Um, I just wish this thing would show all 100 guys that I put in here. And they kind of threw off my rankings, too. So these are 100% accurate. Uh, the Vikings, I think, would take Lindstrom in this scenario. Titans? I think the Titans could go. We had them going with Brian Burns. They could be looking at a D lineman or wide receiver. I think Omenahu would be good uh, in the Vrabel defense. They can play the end spot for them. Steelers? Had him go in corner. They could be looking at linebacker. Is there one worthy of the spots? You know, I think I think Tavon Coney is, but do you, do I think he goes? Do I think he goes there? You know, I, I don't know if he does. I can't say that he does. I, you know, maybe a little early, but I, I think he's worthy of the spot. I think Gardner Johnson's an option here. We're gonna give him Gardner Johnson. I think it's definitely uh they did definitely need a playmaking guy in the defensive, the, you know, in the, in the secondary. You know, he can play in the slot. He can play safety for them. I think it makes sense. Uh, the Eagles. Eagles are looking for running backs. Also looking for edge rushers. Um, man, do they go Montgomery? They go Holyfield. We'll give them Dave Montgomery. I think uh, those two, Singletary too. I think any of those three are for sure options. Uh, the Texans, they went corner in the first round. We need offensive linemen for the Texans. We need, uh, they need another pass rusher too. Is there a pass rusher worth the spot? Um, take a look at some of these offensive linemen available. You got David Edwards, Titus Howard. Um, that's tough. Um, where is, there we go, Eric McCoy. Now I think they're looking more like a tackle here. Uh, between David Edwards and, and Titus Howard, for me, um, we'll give we'll give him David Edwards here with pick fifty four, and they pick twice in a row. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Looking at edge rushers, I'm already thinking of one. I think Christian Miller. I think they'll like Christian Miller. Uh, you know, a lot of upside for him. Not uh, not an insane amount of reps at that position. Fairly new, and he's done a good job. Uh, the Patriots are up next. Uh, I like L. J. Collier for the Patriots. Um, I all ooh, I also like Jalen Ferguson. Two guys I think fit. We're going to give him Ferguson. I think Ferguson's a good fit um, for the Patriots there. Even with Trey Flowers back, they could use a guy like that. The Eagles, we had them getting a corner running back. Yeah, we're looking at pass rush for them too. And then, yeah, we can give LJ Collier to them. Like two back-to-back -back picks. I think uh, either of these guys can fit either of these teams. I think that makes a lot of sense. And they're 4-3 defenses. These guys play 4-3 end. Uh, the Cowboys could use a tight end. Well, now the news that Jason Witten's back. I still think, I still think they could use a tight end. Um, they'll also, I think we can have another edge rusher guy go here. You know, it's important to have depth, and Taco Charlton hasn't really stepped up either, so they could be looking for a starter. I think they'll like Zimenez. You know, I, you know their rank on him is a little low, maybe a little low. I think they'll like him. I think it's a Cowboys guy, um, so that's a possibility there. Man, we're just ripping through offense or edge rushers, I should say. Um, oh, a guy I like for the Colts, Draymond Jones. They got Lewis last year. They move him to the end. I think they'll keep Draymond, Draymond Jones, excuse me, where he's at. 
Ohio State duo, though, uh, there for the Colts. Makes sense. Good haul for them so far. Uh, and now, yeah, this is, wouldn't be too early, uh, Tavon, you know, according to the draft network, I guess. But Tavon Coney, I think a very instinctive linebacker. Maybe not the most athletic guy. Maybe that's why he's down here. But, um, you know, I think he's a very good linebacker. The Chargers would love to have him there at pick 60. The Chiefs at 61. Who we had him? We had him taking this. We had him taking Taylor Rapp. Uh, they could. Oh, I already know. I already know. Guys just popped in my head. Uh, where's Julian Love? Julian Love makes sense here at pick 61. Uh, they could use a couple corners. Saints. Saints don't have any glaring needs to me. You know, they could get better here and there, but it's, just, it's a win now team. They don't have um, a lot of glaring needs. You know, a guy I like for them. Like, uh, Ingram, if they lose Ingram, Holyfield's a great Ingram replacement. Makes sense. You know, they don't want to give Kamara the whole load, even though he should be getting a lot of it. Uh, Holyfield makes a lot of sense there as an Ingram replacement. The Chiefs are back up. Um, what could they go here? They can go another running back to pair with Damian Williams. They can go, um, they can go another corner of safety. Definitely a possibility. Um, they're gonna trade. They're supposed to trade Justin Houston. They could go edge rusher. Ooh, this is tough. We still gotta get to a third round. It's gonna be a long video. Um, yeah, I'm thinking edge rusher. If there's a good one available here. Uh, yeah, I think it's too early for any of these guys right now. I think it's too early. I think, um, they could go Devin Singletary. They could, they could go with another corner. They really could go with another corner here. Um, I, you know, pairing Julian Love and a guy like Rocky Sin or Arurie, um, I, I think, uh, either one, you go Rocky Sin here, you know, apparently scouts are higher on him than maybe some people. Uh, so the yeah, pair of the two young corners, Patriots, Patriots can go, they can go receiver again. They can go. I like Ryan Finley for them though. They're low on Ryan Finley. Interesting. Um, I like Ryan Finley, accurate quarterback. I like him for the Patriots, maybe a little early. Um, they, they can go in another receiver. They can go, they can go an interior D line guy. It's a tough situation here. I think they, they could go with another receiver. Um, Arcego Whiteside, possibility. Paris Campbell, possibility. They already got Marquise Brown. This is a tough pick. I like Ryan Finley for them, but maybe they can wait a little bit. They got a couple offensive line free agency, free agents. Um, we can give him Titus Howard. You know, Titus Howard's a guy with a lot of upside. And I can see the Patriots, you know, working with him. The Cardinals are on the clock. Guy I like for the Cardinals. And I'm sure former Texas Tech coach, Kingsbury, likes him a lot too. Antoine Wesley, uh, you know, measured him pretty good at Texas Tech. Has a, he's a great film too for a big guy. You know, he, he can move. He can definitely move. So I think they'll like Wesley there in the third round. Makes sense for their offense. The Raiders are next. Do they still need an edge rusher? Still need an edge rusher. Zach Allen makes a lot of sense in this pick here. Boston College, you know, concern with him is his athleticism. But, you know, as long as, you know, he's not off the ball here in this defense. So I think he'll be okay. The Niners would be up next. Niners gave him an edge rusher, a receiver. They could use... I think they'll take care of the safety situation in, in free agency, perhaps. Um, could use another linebacker as well. Yeah, that's a tough situation. Now we're getting now this is interesting now that we get into the third round here. Again, they could use another safety. Um, running back possibly because you don't know what you're gonna you got a couple guys that are good, but you know, injuries, a little bit of a concern. Could go grab another receiver, definitely a possibility. Um, we had him getting Debo Samuel, man. Could they grab our Sega white side too? That'd be something else. That would be something else. They could use another corner. Uh, I think too, because, you know, they have a pretty good duo with Sherman and Witherspoon. I like Witherspoon a lot. Uh, but you know, not a whole bunch after that. It's really good to have depth. Orarie from Penn State. We'll give him, we'll give, uh, the Niners, him. I, I think, you know, corner. you can never have enough corners, in my opinion. You know, you got to have multiple guys here, uh, especially with Sherman getting up there in age. So, you definitely, I think they're going to get a safety and free agency. Uh, could use another one of those, too, but I think better prospect here. Uh, the Jets are next. They, they're going to need to get another second rounder, probably. Uh, they got an edge rusher. 
man. They, they need a receiver. They need a D-line. They need a lot of things here. They need a running back. Um, what running back? They can go Devin Singletary here. Makes sense there. He can be their guy. The Jags, offense lineman, wide receiver. They could use um, a safety. They could use tight end, yeah. It's a tough situation here. Could they grab one? They drafted pretty well last year. They don't really necessarily need. They could go another receiver. You know, they got quite a few. Uh, you know, the Jags, I think, are a pretty complete team. You get a, could get a quarterback of the future. Um, you know, if they, I'm predict, predicting them in this situation to get Foles, uh, the guy to learn behind Foles. I think Greer makes sense actually. Um, we'll give him Will Greer. I think it's a future guy. You know, he needs time to learn. That's one of those guys that needs time to learn and has a lot of upside. Uh, the Bucks went offense line safety. Um, let's get him a pass rusher if we can, or a running back. Interesting here. Um, which couple guys to choose from? Edge rusher is the one worthy of the pick. Um, Winovich could be pretty good. They desperately need a running back at this point. Daryl Henderson, I'm thinking about. Rodney Anderson, I'm thinking about here. Damian Harris, I think they'll like Rodney Anderson. To me, that's that's uh, I got that fits in there. To give him Rodney Anderson there in the third. Broncos had him taking a linebacker, a corner. Um, Who? Could go with another defensive guy for Vic Fangio there. Um, I don't, you know, people say they need a receiver. I don't really think they need a receiver that badly. Uh, they could use a tight end. You know, I think they could use, ooh, between Dawson Knox and Sternberger. Definitely could use, they got a couple tight ends, but I think they can use, we're going to give him Sternberger because he's more of that athletic guy. You know, he can split out wide to help that offense a lot. So I think that makes sense there. Uh, the Bengals would be next. They got a linebacker. They got a D lineman. Let's see. They could also use a tight end, too. You know, a lot of injuries there. They could definitely use another corner. Um, definitely could use another corner, in my opinion. Lonnie Johnson, definitely a possibility here. We're going to give him Lonnie Johnson. You know, I was a little higher on him, like, right after the Senior Bowl, and I got to watch the tape a little bit. Excellent in the passing game. You know, tackling, he needs some work in the tackling department. You know, if it wasn't for that, he'd probably be maybe a first-round corner. So, yeah, some upside here. Uh, and now the Patriots are up again. We're going to give the Patriots Ryan Finley. I, I like it. They're really low on Ryan, Ryan Finley. Uh, I like Ryan Finley to the Patriots. Uh, the Bills are up next. They are still not able to grab a receiver, but now they can. Arcega Whiteside with Josh Allen makes a lot of sense here. Packers are up next. Safety, edge rusher, offensive lineman we gave them. They could use a receiver as well here. Um, Demarcus Lodge. Come in and contribute for them right away. I like Lodge on the Packers. Quarterback and receiver went to the Redskins. They could use a corner. They could use linebacker help. They could use definitely could use a safety as well. Is there one worthy of the spots? Savage Thornhill. Um, you know, a guy I'm not seeing. I'm gonna assume he's under corners because he could be a slot guy. Man. Oh, I passed him up. Yeah, Monty Hooker. You know, I think it's a safety or a slot guy. Uh, Redskins take a Monty Hooker there. He's a very, very good tape from Hooker. Uh, Panthers went edge rusher, and they went offensive line. Could go tight ends. They could go – they need a safety as well. Uh, I like Savage, actually. He comes to mind about the Panthers. Savage makes sense for the Panthers. He can be a, tr be a true safety for them. They got a couple uh, guy that, guys that can play in the box already, so um, Savage makes sense. Uh, the Dolphins are up next. We gave them quarterback and an interior defensive line. They definitely could use an edge rusher. That's for sure. Let's see. Oh, Joe Jackson right away comes to mind. You know, he fits He fits that, that defense. Um, Flores would like to work with him. To, definitely. I like Joe Jackson. There are the Dolphins. Falcons, we had them getting offensive linemen, interior defensive line. They could use edge. They could use – they might lose Tevin Coleman. So could they look for they got they got Edo Smith though they'll be okay there I think they may look for an edge guy because the the question about Vic Beasley will be back but there's always a question about that um I th they could go Winovich you know I don't know if he can play on the line with the hand in the dirt but they all, they're kind of um, 
you know, Quinn's always trying to switch it up on the defense. He wants his guys to step back a little bit. You know, it's you know, it's not your traditional four three. So I think Winovich could work there. You know, if if he didn't have the injury, he'd probably be an early second round pick. The Browns are up next. They got a receiver interior D line. They could grab another corner for sure. Um we'll take a look at the corners, see what we got left. Interesting. You know, everyone's different. I I'm way different on my corners. I like Jamal Peters a lot. Um, he's sitting there. Um, they're pretty high on Justin Lane. Chris Boyd is a lot of upside. Upside with him. Hamp Cheers is a playmaker. Savion Smith, Alabama. You know, I think they're a little low on him there. He's a pretty solid player. Amon Marshall's solid. Um, Ryan Pulley's very solid. They got him ranked 422. Arkansas corner is very solid. Um, I would like Jamal Peters possibly. Uh, they could go. They can look at safeties too. Juan Thornhill, uh, maybe a little similar to uh, Peppers, which they already got. Um, yeah, it's tough to say what they can go with here. They can go with our edge guy too. Is there one worthy of this pick? To me, no. I, I don't think any of these guys are worthy of this pick right now. I think you're reaching a little bit. So maybe a trade back spot because you can see I'm. You know, struggling a little bit. There's some good interior D-line left. We already gave them one, which they can grab another one. There's some really good guys left. I actually think this actually may, I think Kalen Saunders actually makes sense because they could they could use another interior D-line guy, but he has experience playing on the edge too. You can have some fun with him. He can play multiple positions, a lot of upside. So that makes sense there. Um, the Vikings. The Vikings, we had them take an offensive lineman, tight end. Uh, what else could they use? They definitely are a pass rusher. You know, they didn't have too much of a rotation last year. Uh, they may trade trade Trey Waynes. They could use another corner. Uh, they need a number three receiver. They need, I think Anthony Barr could be out, so they could use another linebacker. They need one that can cover and that can blitz here. Is there one there? Um, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, David Long, or yeah, David Long, Jermaine Brat, Pratt, excuse me, and Ben Burke Curvin, I think, fit their defense. I think maybe just a round too early for them, though. Um, that's possibility. Could use a D-tag. I think they would like Gerald Willis, actually. That, that comes right to my mind right now. I think if they lose Sheldon Richardson, Gerald Willis is a perfect in that three technique for Mike Zimmer's defense. So Willis makes sense there. They, they could use a number of things there, though. Uh, the Titans, uh, they're filling needs. They definitely need a wide receiver. Um, couple guys you can go with here. I think Paris Campbell or oh man, Paris Campbell or Hardman sitting here. I think they would like Campbell. Both definitely great picks in that situation. Steelers they went corner and they went safety. They went DBs. They need a linebacker. Um, is there ones that would fit in this situation in this at this pick right now? Yeah, they're kind of waiting for a linebacker, but they kind of have to at this point. It's another edge rusher they can use, another receiver. Or we are just talking about Miko Hardman. You know, they definitely that could be a Antonio Brown replacement right there. Makes a lot of sense. The Seahawks had them grab an edge rusher. They could use D. They could use a number of things. Definitely could use another number of things. I'm gonna go straight. I already know who's in my head here. Um, and it's going to be Dalen Mack. Dalen Mack's very productive interior defense line for Texas A&M. I think he fits their defense, and it's definitely what they could use. The Ravens got a receiver. I think they're pretty much set on defense. You know, they got to get Zedarius Smith back. I expect them to get C.J. Mosley back. Um, you know, they could be looking for a running back to compete with Gus Edwards here. They could be looking to grab another, uh, another wide receiver here. Uh, Henderson and Harris. Tough, tough decision. I could see them both, and and they seem to like Bama guys in the past, you know. So I guess that'd be the tiebreaker. I think I can see both of them in their offense. So uh, we'll go Damian Harris there. Uh, the Texans they grabbed offensive line, they grabbed corner. We get we got them a lot of stuff. They could use more offensive line for sure. Could use another receiver. Could use another corner. Um, let's see here. Uh, they could go McCoy. I think worthy of the spot. He can play guard or center for them. Uh, the Bears, finally the Bears are on the clock. They can go running back here. They can go Daryl Henderson. I think they'll be more into a guy like Benny Snell, uh, which possibly could be a fourth-round pick. Uh, looking at edge rushers, they definitely need a rotation. They don't have much of a rotation. Um, DeAndre Walker from Georgia could make a lot of sense here, um, especially with uh, especially with you know the Roquan Smith there liked him. 
I'm going to give him DeAndre. It might be a little early, though. It might be a little early, but I think they'll wait for the running back. A team that doesn't have a lot of huge needs. And then they'll get some of their DBs back. They could use a safety, but I'm imagining they're going to sign one or get one back. Um, so not a lot of needs for the Bears. Very well done there. Um, they didn't really need a lot of these picks. I'm going to give him DeAndre Walker. You know, I think, in my opinion, maybe a little early, but it's something something they, they uh, I can see them doing there. You know, a guy that can... You know he can be an edge ru- he can be an edge rusher at the linebacker position, or he can just be your traditional linebacker. So, um, you know you can do you can do multiple things with him. I think that would be appealing to them. Next up is the Lions, and would we give them edge rusher and tight end? Could use a corner. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead. Could use another interior D lineman too, possibly. Somebody I do think they'll like. They'll like Bugs. They'll like Wren. And they're pretty much set at the D line though right now. They could use another corner. They could use another receiver. Um, but somebody I think they'll like. Justin Lane's a possibility. I like I like Jamal Peters honestly, but you know hasn't been really getting too much talk. Um, I think Justin Lane could be a Lions guy. You know I think they they need another corner. The guy of the future opposite of Darius Slay. Um, so I think that makes sense there. You know, I think people are a little higher, maybe guys around the league, a little higher on him than I am. You know, maybe a little early, but, you know, more of a predictive pick here. Um, you know, he needs to brush up on his technique a little bit, but, you know, long corner, um, you know, smart corner. Colts are up next. A lot of pick, lots of picks for the Colts. They got interior D line receiver corner already. What could they go? I would imagine they pick up on our safety and free agency. That's just my prediction. They could use uh they could use an edge guy. Is there one worthy of this pick? I don't think so. I just don't think so. Um another interior D line, I don't think so. Uh running back probably not worth it's either go big or go home at the running back. So you got a, quite a few guys that can play. I like Marlon Mack a lot. Um could grab another receiver, actually. Could grab another they got AJ Brown, so maybe they can go out and get more of your traditional outside guy, perhaps. Is there one worthy of the spot? Preston Williams definitely would be worthy of the spot, but, you know, off the field issues. But, you know, his talent, maybe. I heard some say his talent's at first round. You know, in my opinion, maybe second round. Uh, I think the Colts are in a position to take a chance on a guy like that. We're going to give him Preston Williams here in the third round. Uh, the Cowboys, Cowboys definitely can go. I'm going to go Dawson Knox. That makes a lot of sense here. You know, even though Witten's coming back. You got other guys that can play, but Dawson Knox makes a lot of sense. That's a tight end of the future there. Cowboys, the team, with not a lot of big needs either, I don't think. Could go one of those interior D linemen too, but Knox makes too much sense. Chargers, they already grabbed an interior defense lineman guy, and they and they grabbed a linebacker, but I think they can go back to that. I literally think they can go back to that. They also can go offensive line too. Um, let's see, this is very interesting. Go with a number of guys here. They can actually go back to the interior D line. Get Isaiah Bugs. Get Ren. Um, they're missing somebody here too. They're missing um, gains from Washington. We're very solid. Whew, another linebacker possibly. David Long, Jermaine Pratt, Curvin. I think they'll like Pratt. Maybe a little early. I think they'll go. It's Caleb McGarry's been getting a lot. We're going to give him McGarry. Uh, he's been getting a lot of talk. You know, some guy I got to go back to and watch a little more. He's been getting a lot of talk. Could possibly go earlier in this. Uh, the Chiefs are up next. They took a corner, a safety. They took two corners and a safety. Um, pass rusher. We keep going to the pass rushers. I don't think there's one worthy of the spot. Uh, running back. I think we can give him Daryl Henderson here. I think that uh, I think that makes – ooh, actually, they're – they're throwing me out. How are they this low on Dexter Williams? Dexter Williams, I like a lot in the Chiefs offense. A lot. Um, you know, a guy that can compliment Damian Williams. Man, that's tough. To me, on my board, I have I have Dexter Williams ahead of Daryl Henderson. I, I see him on the Chiefs. I really do. I'm going to do it. Benny Snell's left, too. They're pretty low on some of these guys. I like Dexter Williams. A lot. You know, once he's in Oberfield, he can run, but he's, he's a strength guy, too. He's maybe has the one of the better... You know, visions in this running back class. I like him on the Chiefs. That makes sense to me. You know, third, fourth round. Um, you know, fourth round would be a steal in my opinion. Jets got an edge rusher and a running back. 
Man, they need a number of things. Go back to look at the receivers. What do we got here? Does Andy Isabella? Depends on what he runs. Got to wait and see, I guess. Um, Jordan Humphrey, Greg Dortch. Greg Dortch is a burner. Uh, man, they could use a number of things. I think you'd wait on the receiver, possibly. Could use another D-line. Yeah, we can go back to the D-line here. Um, I think they can go at Isaiah Bugs. Rams. Rams grab the safety. They could use line, edge rusher, D-line. I think we can go Ren here. We can possibly go Gaines. Could use a linebacker as well. Drafted quite a few of them last year. Um, I think they'll like these guys, though. That's the thing. Tough. It's always tough to figure out what the Rams are going to take. I think they really could go offensive line, possibly. You know, they got to make sure. They took a couple guys in this round, so I think it could be go big or go home, but they got to make sure, you know, when the guys are, some of the, if the guys get hurt, you know, the veterans, you know, maybe they're getting close to being done. It's tough. And they go with, um, you know, these interior D linemen are still pretty good here. They can go at Reno Wren. Plug them in there. Browns, receiver, D-line, taken. Could use another edge rusher. We had him taking Saunders, though. That could be an interior or an edge rusher guy. Uh, they could go corner. Could use another corner here. Um, David Long could be a box guy here for them. Hamp Cheevers, possibly. I like Jamal Peters. I don't know if he goes this early. Um, you know, a lot of upset, a lot of upside for Jamal Pierce. I think they can, they can, it's worthy of this spot here. Uh, the Browns definitely can take a shot. Um, but yeah, they got Denzel Ward. They got TJ Carey. David Long is going to be a very good slot guy. And he also can play outside too. They could go David Long from Michigan there. Uh, the Redskins, they got a receiver. They got a quarterback. They got a corner edge rusher is a possibility. Tight ends, a possibility. Um, did we give him a safety? We did not give him a safety. Thornhill or Mike Edwards. We're going to give him a Thornhill here. I think both those have an opportunity to go in that spot. Uh, the Patriots gave him an edge rusher, wide receiver, and quarterback. I think we can go back to the interior D line once again here. I, I like they're a little low on gains. I think gains is, re is realistic in the spots for the Patriots. Uh, and the Jags, the game receiver, offensive lineman, and quarterback could use a tight end. I think they're pretty much set on the defense. They could use another corner for rotation for depth. Um, could use a tight end, too. What do we got for tight ends left? Mm, I don't know. if Maybe a little early, just a little bit. Uh, you know, eh, it's tough. Tough spot here. Uh, could use more offensive line. We had them. We had them grabbing one before. Let's see what we got here. Um, oh, Jenkins is still on the board. I think you know he can play center or guard. I think they can go him here. I think that makes sense to me. Uh, and the Rams are back up. They went D line. They went safety. Uh, could go linebacker. Could go edge rusher. Could go offensive line. Who do we just have him taken? I already forgetting so many picks. We haven't taken Reno Ren. Um, yeah, and they look at the offensive line here. They go Michael Deiter. Panthers are up. Edge rusher, safety, interior offensive line. They need edge rushers. I keep going back to the edge rushers. I, there's a big drop-off we're noticing here. We're learning uh, because there's a big drop-off. I don't know. There's a big gap because I don't think any of these guys are really this pick. A lot of guys with a lot of upside. Uh, I think the next best one I'm looking at is probably Anthony Nelson, possibly Jalen Jelks. Um, ben Benagu actually could be Austin Bryant. Austin Bryant, yeah, I, I think he – I think the Panthers would actually like him. You know, it's tough because he's, you know, not not the best guy from that Clemson front, but, you know, he definitely can play. I think Austin Bryant's actually worth this pick here. You know, I don't think the Draft Network would agree with their ranking there, but I think he's worthy of, worthy of that pick. And the Patriots are up. Man, so many picks there. That's nice. Um, they could grab. They can grab multiple things here. They can grab a safety. They can grab. I actually like. We we saw Chung got hurt. He's not um, getting any younger. Obviously, I like. Uh, and I have Sean Bunting as a corner. 
you know, so, uh, but I like Mike Edwards for them. I think a guy that can play corner. I think Mike Edwards from his tape, I think he'll play safety. I think he's a good safety. He likes to come up and hit. Um, I think he can play safety traditionally. I think he can play in the box, and I think he can play corner. I've seen him do a lot of man and, you know, sticking the receivers, running with him well downfield. So, a guy that can do multiple things. I think the Patriots will like him there. Uh, the Ravens took a receiver, running back, uh, could go, I don't know if they go back to the defense here. I think they can they can really grab another receiver. They can grab a bunch of them, honestly. Isabella, possibility. Little Jordan Humphrey, Greg Dortch. Something tells me they'll really like Greg Dortch. Greg Dortch, you know, kind of get the Tyree Kill comparisons. Uh, Isabella is a possibility, too. Um, I'm going to give them, you know, Dortch. I'm feeling Dortch right now. Maybe it's a little early. It's the last pick in the third round. You know, he's he's a great route runner, a lot of production, and I lost where he was already. And, yeah, we're going to give him Dortch. We're going to go ahead and do it. That's that's the draft, ladies and gentlemen. That is the draft. There we go. It's a long video already. I would recap it, but it was a long video already. So I'm going to go ahead and end it. I appreciate everyone's support. Uh, go ahead and follow our Twitter. You're going to want to do that for, to get ready for the combine stuff. Just – for the whole NFL offseason. It's always talking on there. Subscriber goals at 20K. Please help us get there if you haven't clicked that subscribe button. Uh, but yeah, trying to wrap this up. Long video. That's going to do it for this one. Check out our videos. Stay tuned for more. Goodbye.